No, huh? you were not live. You were not live. <laughs> oh, hell. oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh my gosh. No, this is what happened when you have people who are non-technical doing technical stuff. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. So I, and I'm willing, when I make a mistake, I'm willing and ready to admit that I make the blue, a, a boo-boo. So here's the thing. I'm here talking away with my guest, Ashley. I'm here with my guy, Hunter. And we've been talking along for 18 minutes. Only Not because fun. I'm saying, anybody, why don't anybody viewing the thing? And I looked up and I see something that says, start broadcast. I'm saying, then why am I supposed to start broadcast? Are we not broadcasting? No, I was not broadcasting. So, yes, the joke of a lifetime. Talking away. Laugh, Natalie, laugh. No, I can't laugh. I'm nervous still, and I'm nervous. <laughs> 18 minutes passed already. <laughs> so, guys, we've been here for 18 minutes. Um, welcome. Let me just do this over. And uh, so, I guess what we're doing before was actually dress rehearsal. So here's the thing. I'm Henny Kawaki Sporto, and we are live on Jamaicans.com. And I'm so happy to have this week. We started two weeks ago. We're brought on Sasha Lee Hague Seals from Japan. She's a Jamaican who's now living, who's migrated to Japan. And we had a great time. We had a great conversation talking about the experiences and everything. And so this week, because it's an it's this this show is done every two weeks. Yes. Well, do a recap. That's what I'm doing, my dear lady D. So you, you give the recap, Henneka. <laughs> I'm, giving, <laughs> I'm giving the recap. This is so hilarious. Like you can all laugh at me. Like this is this needs to go viral, right? So I'm on a live, but I was not live. So right. So Natalie Hunter, she's a nurse. She migrated from Jamaica many, many years ago. And of course, she went between, she went to Brooklyn first, and now she's in um uh Miami. She's in in, in Florida, right? And she's doing great things. Welcome, Kevron. Happy to have you. So sorry, guys. We started like six o'clock because I, if you know me well, you know that I'm a time person, right? And already we, I'm seeing 30 viewers and I'm loving all my viewers. Thank you so much. Um, let me just show what Kevron says. Kevron, say hi, guys. Yes. Right. And Natalie was actually sharing about growing up in the country in Westmoreland and stuff. I know she go on her friend and her family member and she picked fruit and, you know, the fruit and she loves spending time with her grandfather. She grew up with her grandparents. The grandmother, that's not true. Yeah, yeah, man, two of them. Yeah, yeah, grandparents and she, all of that. So that is exactly where we were, right? And I was asking her when I recognized that I was not live at all, was asking her, is there any memory, any one memory that would have stood out to her over all these years throughout her childhood? And she was about to answer when I recognized that, hey, this live was not actually live. So now, Natalie, take it away. Say hi to all. Hello, everybody. <laughs> so, my, I mean, there are many childhood memories, but one memory I do remember um, clearly is going to the farm early in the mornings with my grandfather. Um, as we hear the van, the, the van start up, everybody jump in and, and want to go feed the, uh, feed the, um, the horses or milk the cows to bring milk home. Um, and just, you know, help him tend to the farm. So I do remember going to the farm every morning for the space of a summertime or more. Oh, okay. So the farm, I were just, we're just reiterating the fact that she's country girl, right? Yeah. Um, yes. Um, yes, Kevin, love being your own fellow entrepreneurs to the world. Yes. Okay, nice, 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 nice. Okay, so this show, though, is not necessarily about entrepreneurship, really. You know, this is just something that I, I enjoy. I started doing two weeks ago, and I kind of, well, anything to do with me that I actually do love, right? So I love doing this, um, and here I am. So we're going to get some more into Natalie's business, because she don't think <laughs> to leave her like that and think, hey, Jamaicans.com, um, hi, Natalie. Okay, let me show that one up. Yes, yes, right. <laughs> So let me just say, don't bother things so that you're going to let you off the hook like that, Natalie. I want to be up in your business. I want to hear about relationship. You know, the, yes, man. Tell me like a boyfriend story. And you're, no, yes. no, no. We're not talking about no boyfriend today. <laughs> okay, great. She don't want, she don't want you all fast in our business. But she never knows if you're up in our business like that, right? Lots of people from the University of Delaware. Hi, guys. Thank you for coming on. All right. So you don't want to talk about the boyfriend thing. Talk about um, what you want to talk about, Natalie. What you want to tell the people then? Because... So, 
we're going to talk about real serious stuff, but right, we have to lighten the moment and let them get to know you because you're doing great things and we want them to see a lighter side of you. So what you want to share with them or wonderful community watching you and they want to hear a little more about your personality. Oh, geez. <laughs> um, I'm not a public speaker, so <laughs> that, that's number one. So right now it's very nerve wracking, but hopefully I get through it. Um, so I love to dance. I love reggae music. I love dance all. Mm -hmm. Love music. Um, can you dance? Yeah. All yeah. Right. I don't know that I don't know I don't I don't really catch the latest moves yet They're like a TikTok business but <laughs> it's all right. you you and me both um <laughs> <laughs> so here's what's gonna happen we're gonna transition now into more serious stuff right well not so serious but just trying to get a sense of the whole migration for you and and the process how was it why did you decide to fully move from Jamaica to live in the US and what has it been like for you living outside of Jamaica? All right, that's a, that's a deep <laughs> So my decision my decision to migrate wasn't mine. Um I would say my parents, my parents living in Jamaica um decided they wanted to have a quote unquote better life or more opportunity. Um my mom is a teacher. Um well prior educator in Jamaica and then my dad he he worked at Alcan um for quite a number of years but then they wanted more so they decided to um pack up the family and move to Brooklyn New York I mean I remember the day I was about six seven years old so you know long 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 long, long time and it was cold it was I think it was almost winter time or something I said boy my skin don't make for this for going to winter winter time in Brooklyn <laughs> But I mean, I mean, as a child, I mean, from my standpoint, I mean, every, I mean, I had a great time. I mean, or I mean, my parents, I saw them work very hard to make sacrifices in order to have a, you know, a living for us. I have two siblings. I have two younger brothers. Um, so it's three of us living in Brooklyn in a one bedroom apartment. And it's like five people. <laughs> right <laughs> so but we made it happen and then my grandmother my paternal grandmother moved up and helped to watch us and take care of us um in the one bedroom apartment mm -hmm. <laughs> so we we had we had some humble times you know living in in brooklyn um so my best friends my great friends are still there we still keep in contact um and then from there, I did um, elementary school to what you call it, like middle school and um, one year of high school there. Um, and they, I went to like a Catholic school, like Christian school the whole time mm -hmm. there. And, um, so, you know, my, fa my father probably can do a better, a better story <laughs> of all the difficulties. <laughs> Let me ask you though, um, because you you mentioned you know um, five of you in that one room. You left Jamaica, and I, I assume that was not the case when you were in Jamaica. Is that a right assumption? I mean, you had more people. Right. No, no. We had a huge house in Jamaica. We have helper. We have everything. We have gardener. Everybody to help us. <laughs> my question is. My question is. At that point, why why was that? The, why was there a need for that sacrifice? Because having used to. Um, somewhat of luxury as it were to moving into an apartment with, with a, a one bedroom apartment with five of you guys in there it's, it's a sacrifice why was there the need for that sacrifice well you know you want to start small according to my father would say you, you start small i mean you, you're coming as, as a immigrant you know you don't have credit you don't have anything in the state in the united states you just have maybe a couple hundred dollars that you bring up you you, you know you convert to u.s dollars and that's what my parents could have afforded at that at that time. Um, so I mean, so at that time, I mean, Jamaica has lo the luxuries of, of a hell fund and everything. But then that's a sacrifice they made to come up and say, "Hey, look, we just have to ban ban rebellion, just make it work." And and it did work. Yes. It did work. How long did you do that for? I mean, we lived in New York. We lived in Brooklyn. I mean, well, to tell you the truth. It was a one bedroom apartment, but then we end up making it into a second, a two bedroom. Uh -huh. Americans are very. Most very yeah, yeah. They, put up, they, put, they put up drywall and everything, you know? It's a, it's a two bedroom that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm most Jamaica, you come from. All right. right. 
So, um, and that is it about Jamaicans. We are resilient. We are, you know, we are creative. We make nothing. We make something out of nothing. And that's what I love about us, our culture. And we serve, We can survive anywhere. Just a couple of weeks ago, we had Sasha Lee on. She shared about how it is that it was for her when she, I mean, lived in a community. She didn't know her neighbors. And she was like in Bush and the language. She couldn't talk to nobody because she never talked Japanese. Right? So you had to do that. And so what are some of the things that you've been up to? Having gone to hi Steven, good to have you. Hi Steven. <laughs> so, what are some of the things you've been up to, Natalie, since you you migrated? You know, um, take us through. Okay, you're now moving past a one bedroom with five own, and you converted to two bedroom, and so on. What are some of the things you've been up to? I want to hear about that. You want to talk about the, the backpack thing, or you want to before that? Um, Come on, before we get to backpack, yeah. Because okay, 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 okay. Last, yeah. Well, you know, my parents made all the decisions. I think around what 1994, we moved from Brooklyn, the one, the one and a half bedroom apartment, yeah. and we we moved to um, Orlando, Florida, uh, which we're back to the standards of a Jamaican house. Everybody have their own bedroom. <laughs> Everybody have their own bedroom, and um, you know. So that was much better. And then I really admire my parents for that. The fact that their immigrants don't, I mean, well, they had their siblings here, but um, they were able to save. I mean, that's something I've learned from them that you have to save in order to get what you want. You know, no one's gonna provide or give you anything. Um, so, you know, for them to move from a one bedroom apartment from in New York to Florida in a huge home, I mean, that's uh, admirable. <laughs> um, so from there, I went to high school. I finished out high school in Orlando, and then I moved. And then I went to University of South Florida. That's where I know Mr. Stephen Hart from, who connected us. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then from you know there, there I, I I pursued my degree, but then ended up transferring to South Florida to finish my nursing degree. Mm -hmm. Um, but now I'm a, I'm a nurse practitioner. Um, I'm trying to find. Go. Don't mind me. Keep talking. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I mean, that's a business side as far as my my, my day my day life, my work life. Um, go Bulls, yes, Stephen. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm actually trying to find somewhere that is not uh, that that has light because my lighting is poor at my house. I don't know why this is the case, but it's mm -hmm. very very poor. I'm actually on the outside, and I realize it's getting dark. So. I think we can still do it. I'm still a bit dark. We're getting a bit dark, but it's okay. We can we can make this happen. We certainly, right? Okay. So yeah. So um, you do all of that now, and you're you, you're a nurse. Yeah, I'm a nurse. Yes. Because you're a nurse. Why do you like to take care of people? <laughs> what kind well, of nurse are you, first of all? Well, 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 well little people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 baby. I don't do adults. Um, so. I realized that, you know, that's been my passion indirectly or innate passion that I tapped into, I guess, in college years. I realized I wanted to take care of children, but didn't know how, and then realized, okay, I can be a nurse and be a pediatric nurse. Mm -hmm. So it's it's my passion to, um, to care for children and that I've been doing for 16 years now. <laughs> okay, awesome. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Um, Taking care of children is what I love to do. All right. So, I mean, I don't know if you could compare the, the, the system in Jamaica, um, the health system, healthcare system in Jamaica to that in the United States, right? Um, but you may, you, you must have an idea of what it is in Jamaica. So give us a little, just a little comparison of what that is like in terms of healthcare and what you've read about, was here about, because you, you, you never practiced here, right? So. Right, no, 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 no. The resources are definitely lacking, and it. I mean, I don't mean to start up negative, but it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. I mean, I've, I've, I've toured the um, Sav Hospital, Sav um, Lamar Hospital in Burn Savannah, and I mean, the resources are not there. People, I mean, they use one box of gloves they're using for the day. I mean, they have, they don't have the right machinery, you know, for for asthma, for kids with asthma. Um, you know, the, the resources are lacking. It kind of breaks my heart. I'm not sure what we can do. I mean, well, there's, there's some doing with this. There needs to be more that needs to be done um, with trying to get 
you know, money or funding to the hospitals because it's not right for a child to die from asthma. I mean, and that a child here in America don't die from asthma. I mean, there's no, unless you totally are negligent, you know? So, um, but a lot, I know like the, there's Bustamante Children's Hospital who's getting a lot of funding. I know Shaggy does a, a big thing every year um, to try to get the proper equipment to care for the children in the cardiology department. Um, but it's not, 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 it goes down to not enough nurses too, you know? Nurses have like 30, 40 patients a day. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. So you must have had when you were when you were when you were in Jamaica when you know before you left, you must have had some idea of what life would have been like for you when you migrated to the US. Uh was it was it what you thought it would be? Is it any different? Is it better? Give us a sense of that. Um, is Jamaica better now? No, meaning no the US uh no in terms of your expectations what were your expectations before you left Jamaica for the United States and are I mean, you, have your expectations been met yeah well when you come up far and everything nice i mean <laughs> i mean I, I was a baby i was a baby i was 6 or 7 years old you know so i mean expectation i don't know but i mean it's every, I would say as long as you put your, your your steps into place, I mean, you can achieve what you want, um, you know, so. Sure. Okay, yeah, somebody says Spanish Town Hospital is a disgrace. No blankets, leaking faucets. The emergency room is a is a turn off. That's Debbie. Yes, Debbie, we have all those those issues going on, you know. Um, let me just take a break right here for those who are just joining us. Of course, I'm Henneke Watkins Porto. And we are live on Jamaicans.com. We do this show every two weeks where we bring on a Jamaican who is living overseas. Or for some time, in, in some instances, we'll be taking on some Jamaicans who may be, you know, doing uh, do things in the marketplace. Something. Each time, right. So each time we're going to be bringing somebody that is very different and doing something that is very different. So we're very happy that you could, you could join us. And we're talking, of course, with Natalie Hunter. Natalie is a nurse in the United States, in Florida, and she is doing exceptional stuff. She has something interesting that we're going to spend the most of the time, talk, the remainder of the time, rather, talking mm -hmm. about. But before we get there, okay. no problem. also say that there is an opportunity. If there's anybody watching, there's an opportunity for product placement. So just as how you're seeing me wearing my Patwa shirts, my Patwa apparel shirt, you don't know, I'm the owner of the Patwa apparel brand. I also have a podcast that is called The Entrepreneurial You. It is on iTunes and HennyForWalkingSportion.com. So you can also have product placement. It can be something that you want to promote. We are accepting sponsorship. Um, so, yes. And I also need to, I know I need to start with this lighting thing because it's, it's getting very bad on my side. To apologize for that, but I hope next time. But next time it will be sorted out, all right? So don't kill me. Um, thank you for staying with us. Thank you for joining. And now we're back to Natalie. She has she has an interesting project that she's going to be sharing with us. So take that away, and I want you yeah, tell us what your project is and why you decided to start that project. Okay, so my project is called um, well, simply Project Backpack Jamaica, but it's really um, Vincent Sterling Coot Foundation. Um, it is named after my grandfather who passed away in two thousand or fifteen, no, fourteen, sorry, fourteen. Mm -hmm. Couple years ago, don't yeah. quote. Couple years ago. Couple years ago. <laughs> couple years ago. So no, um, no, 2013, and then yes, and then six months later, I was here at home thinking, you know, boy, you know, my passion is to help and to serve children. What could I do, you know? And my grandfather is known to help and serve the community um, by providing, you know, school lunch to the children, or or, or clothes, or even you know um dinner to, to some of the community boys so i said you know why not start a a, a charity in his name yes so sorry guys I'm, I'm trying to find the best spot sorry go go right ahead natalie right 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 so it was six months later after his death um and uh, may 13th um 2014 that's three years or 13 i can't remember okay you know 14 may 13 2014 there you go 
And yeah. um, I said, you know what? I'm just, it was like a thought. I guess I prayed and I, I said, you know what? Instead of mourning yeah. over him, let's do something positive. And I said, why not pack up a couple of book bags and yeah. bring them to Jamaica? Right. And that I did. I think the first, can you hear? Yes, I'm hearing you. I'm hearing you. Okay. So the first, the first year I packed up like 40 bags or 45 bags, packed them up with everything from book, pencil, reading book, coloring book, crayon, everything. And um, flew down. I mean, it was pretty much grassroots. It, I mean, didn't go through any channels or anything. Brought the 45 bags down and 45 children received book bags. And it was well received. I mean, it, the parents were so thankful and um, all the teachers and the principals said, boy, this is this is what we need in, in this area. And it's actually, sorry, it's in the Burnt Savannah, Westmoreland um, community uh, where my grandfather um lived or my current my family lives there as well so um it's it's been this this year is year four um and um every year we get bigger and we're gonna be better this year last year we had um we gave out over 200 book bags and reading books and food i'm not sorry not food clothes clothes mm -hmm. you know and also um the book bags were, were, was a big hit and everybody i trust me people waiting for this year again <laughs> Okay, so what is really the vision for this charity that you've started? Because trust me, you've started something that's great and you have no idea the impact that you're, that you're already having and, and going to have as you continue to do this project. So what's the vision for it really? My vision, my vision is exactly what I'm doing as far as providing, trying to bridge the gap, trying to bridge the gap, um, whether it's in resources that the parents are not able to afford um, trying to bridge a gap in in the literacy of the children in that area, um, because it's it's education is is key for, for for all childrens everywhere. So it's I mean if I can provide these book bags, I can help even if a mother have three or four children. If 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 one child get one, that's one less bag the mother or dad have to have to pay for. And also to provide, you know, the community, uh, like a community bond, bringing the community together. So along with me and also another vision of mine, really and truly, since I'm a medical person, I'd like to start a healthcare clear screening or clinic along with the backpack drive. So mm -hmm. that was something I can do, you know, prior to school term, make sure they get their shots or their, or their you know, the, the health check or make sure everything is, they're healthy and ready to go to learn. <laughs> Um, so that's, you hear me? That's, sorry, okay. I have lost you a bit. Are you hearing me? I can hear you. Okay, great. Right, right. So finish your last, the last part of that sentence that you're talking about. Though. Right. So with me being a medical professional, I would hope to start a, like a screening clinic um, for the children that come about, like maybe they can check, you know, their um, heart, lungs, check their skin for any you know, infection, infections or even rashes that can help rule out any long-term issues going on for that would have, um, deter or not, um, what should I say, would affect their learning potential, you know. Um, some kids who have respiratory issues, that, that causes them to lose, you know, miss many days of school because they can't breathe or, you know, heart conditions. So, I mean, that's something I like to Get all my friends, my nurse practitioner friends. Let's go, let's go. You know, next year we're gonna try to bring that in. Yeah. Um, what you're actually doing is great. And I know because I just saw Steven says, I've been donating from year one. I'm so happy to see what you're doing, Nat. And I know that so many persons, they're listening now and they've heard what it is that you're about. You know, you're not just about yourself because no. um it is said it is more blessed to give than to receive, and to whom much is given much is expected and you have been given much and so you're giving back you're being this river and not a reservoir you know what i mean right. you're, you're 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 letting it flow which is great now we need to know from you how can persons be a part of this initiative and again let me just apologize for the darkness i promise you my next live i'm going to start out my lighting issues mm -hmm. you see how natalie's screen very bright and pretty and man you're struggling <laughs> over here so i'm sorry about that so yes um please don't let this be a turn off next two weeks join me i think the next two weeks i'm gonna have Stephen hart on we've been having two ladies to start but anyway that's another story let's get back to natalie how can person be part of this initiative Okay, so one, um well I started the, the basic way I started a GoFundMe um is ww dot gofundme.com forward slash project backpack um jamaica 2017 
Um, you can yes. donate. Let me repeat. www. Let me write it. Sorry. Let me write it. www. Uh, go fund me. Dot mm-hmm. com. Fund me. Dot com slash um backpack project backpack Jamaica twenty seventeen. Okay, project bag pack. No, uh, backpack. Jamaica. Oh, back B C K. Yeah, yeah. B C K. Um, project backpack Jamaica. Mm-hmm. Twenty seventeen. Jamaica2017.com. Oh, let me see if Okay, great. Okay, so that is the that's the link there. Why am I not seeing it? Why am I not seeing it? Let me check on my phone if they if, have if it. typed it in and it's not showing. So I don't know if it's because the of www. The- www. Let me let me get let me give it to you. Hold on. Long. It probably is too long for this. Screen. But anyway, right. So we'll repeat. So right. So you're saying you started this crowdfunding campaign. Right. Yeah. Go ahead. You've started this crowdfunding campaign. So that's the that's one of the ways in which persons can right. Or, or you can you know private message me through social media, and then we can figure out the logistics. Um, if you want to particularly donate, you know, actual um supplies, that's a that's a good. I I, I accept that. Um, to um. And we can figure out a way how to get them to me. Um, that's basically it um, for okay. now. Mm-hmm. All right. So, uh, so those persons, because persons in Jamaica in particular, who may okay. be in the West Berlin, in, in the West Berlin area, and mm-hmm. may be able to to would you would you require like you know um, manpower, you know persons who can actually give physical assistance, even if oh they yeah cannot, for sure uh, for sure on the day of on early. the day yes on the day of we're gonna need strong men to lift up table and things <laughs> so i mean that's another reason to direct message me you know who you know if you want okay. to be a part of the day um of, of hand, either, either handing out book bags or manning the um the concession stand with snacks and food or um just being a part of it and enjoying the day and giving back to the community okay awesome so there there you have it you've heard natalie talk about she, she's spoken about you know going from leaving Jamaica to live in Florida. She's now a nurse. And not only she's, is she giving back, I mean, you know, doing well, but she's also giving back. She's received much. And so she's sharing that and she's paying it forward, which is actually quite important because that's the whole duty of humanity, not to receive onto yourselves everything and to hoard, but to also share, share in terms of your time, your talent and your expertise. And that is so cool. So, Natalie, what's next for you? Hmm. What's next for me? That's a that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good question. Uh, what, are, what are what are your um, dreams for persons who are thinking of? Sorry. Um, my house. Oh God, this okay. is terrible. I don't know why everywhere is so dark. I have no idea why everywhere is so dark. But let's okay. Yay. Hi. Yes, we're a little better. We're a little better. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is the um this is the bar area of my house. Welcome home, everybody. <laughs> so we are trying to have this started out really. Right. So your word, parting words for persons who are thinking of migrating. Um, you know, in terms of how they can prepare for a different culture, how they can prepare to assimilate outside of Jamaica. Hi, Paulette. You're saying hello. Yes, go right ahead, Nat. Well, I think having a family member that's already in the States will uh, will be a great help to help guide and to help, you know, guide, guide you um, as far as you know, assimilating and what steps to do and and how to to, to go about it and to, to, whether it's applying for certain you know um, social security card and getting into into the job the job um, world, um, but just socially, I mean, most Jamaicans tend to move to an area that's um, filled with Jamaicans. <laughs> Right. So if you move to an area which which is highly populated with Jamaicans, that would make the 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 the, the migration or the what do you call it the yeah the person who, the actually who went to an area that they spoke no English. No, 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 you can't do that. You can't do that. 
like like my parents now went from Jamaica to Brooklyn. So you know it's beer Jamaicans that live in Brooklyn, right? <laughs> so I mean you have your, your convenience stores where you can get your yam, your banana, everything. Um and, and it feels like home. You have the, your neighbors Jamaican and they respect the community values as far as if you don't have sugar, you can ask so, miss so and so for, for a bag of sugar. But mm -hmm. um, if you move to like Bush Bush, I don't know where's the bush bush, but I mean with no one who does <laughs> It, 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 that that's what makes the um the what do you call it? I keep blanking that makes the transfer easier yeah yeah yeah. yeah 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 something like that yeah okay um, thanks for um the of them I'll be put I've been putting the comments on the screen but I don't know what's happening. No, I'm trying to put the other comments on the screen and for the life of me, it's not showing. So I don't know. I, I can see the comments. Yeah, I can see, but I wanted to um, to show them so that on my on, on both our screen, but apparently this thing must have been tied after a particular time Then you're not able to do that. I don't know because um, I'm not doing anything different and I'm not able to show the comment. And I like to, you know, to show the comments of those who have been engaging us to know that we appreciate you for watching and for you know partaking in this in this discourse that we've been having and it's something that we're doing every two weeks so please come right back here six o'clock i'd said six um six est but sorry guys i always mess up this est time it's really six o'clock jamaican time so you know um, because est is one hour ahead right so um so that's it so my apologies for that it's six o'clock jamaican time so whatever it is just, just told me where you are watching us from you need to tell us where you are watching us from so we know we have some jamaicans in the house we know we have some persons who are living in the u.s but if you just comment and let me know let us know where you're joining us from that we can shout you out we love that right now so you are telling us don't go live in some um place where there is nobody else uh you're gonna learn the hard way like uh, our dear friend Sasha Lee reminded us that you know i just i just can't imagine her being in that era where there's absolutely no um nobody for her to speak with and somebody who likes to talk as she confessed you know that was kind of a challenge but thanks be to god she has overcome that challenge and she's now assimilating very much um she said oh debbie says the bush is where i live in georgia <laughs> after leaving <laughs> after leaving Bye. new york city Georgia, I have no Jamaican neighbor and starving for some Jamaican food. Osh Debs. Um, you, see, you see Debs? Wrong move. <laughs> true. Joseph, on to mom, dad, and me watching. Big up, sis. Yeah, you, you, you're, uh, your brother watching and mom and everybody watching. He's <laughs> doing great things, you know? Um, Andrew, thank you so much. Right. So any parting words that you want outside of the, you know, the, the advice that you give? Um, parting words in terms of anything that you would have learned over time, um, you know, and, and, and philosophy that you're living by that you can share with. All right, let's see. See, these are the hardest questions, right? But um, <laughs> so, so, I mean, growing up or not growing up, for a couple of years, in my early 20s, I had no idea. I always thought that I had no talents. Mm -hmm. Like I couldn't sing, I couldn't dance. Well, I, I can dance, but I couldn't sing. I couldn't play an instrument. Um, but I realized I found my passion. And I, I read a quote, or I think Oprah must have said it, like, you know, find your passion and it, that, that's what would lead you to your life's work, you know? Yeah. So I figure, you know, so I guess that that's my, that's my I guess, um, guidance or, you know, so it's find what you love to do and mm -hmm. it will be a work a day in your life. Okay, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so with me working with children, I mean, it brings joy to me and giving of myself to make their lives a better day and, you know, life. I mean, mm -hmm. that's my humble life's work. Yeah, so that's it. When you work, when you love, when you do what you love, you never have to work a day in your life. Like, seriously, right. sometimes I can so relate to that because even sometimes I'm working and boy, I feel as though I, even as hard as I may be, I still have energy to go to go on. You know what I mean? Right, so I right. Fully relate to that. All right. Yeah. So let me ask our viewers now. Is there anything you want? One question. So I'm going to ask if you if you have a question that you'd like to ask Debbie, 
Um, she's not going to ask, answer anything about no boyfriend and no relationship. There. But if you have a question for her, you can shoot it right here. We have about seven minutes to go. And yeah, we want to hear from you. What, what do you want to ask, Debbie? Go right ahead and ask us. <laughs> she's, she's already biting her nails, like nervous. Like, oh my gosh, what are they going to ask me? <laughs> <laughs> um, apparently you have said it all and mm -hmm. nobody wants to ask any question because you have said everything that they wanted to hear from you've been here and all i can say okay so andrew okay andrew of course is in florida because of course he's your brother and he's watching and he's very yes busy. mommy and daddy and everybody <laughs> hey hey mommy hey daddy hey bro all right. Okay. Talk about job opportunities for people who are fifty and over. Um, what is, is what what you, what are the opportunities like for the fifty and over uh, for job? That's a question for me. Yes, that's what Sophia is asking. She wants you to, to talk about that. So you can just um, you know we know that like in Jamaica, for example, you you when you're when you're fifty and, and over, you know there's this discrimination that has begun. So, um, right. So, is that the same thing? Is it's persons in those age cohort are they facing that kind of uh, discri discrimination because of age for jobs? I mean, I think so. I mean, because you know, you, I mean, well, in nursing, I can only talk from nursing. I mean, you have mm -hmm. you have long term, you know, nurses who are in their in their institution or their hospital for 30, 40 years, but some in some ways or they try to i guess move them out for like the younger the younger nurses because then again you can pay them less mm -hmm. um you can pay them less you know, for the for, for quote unquote the same work but it's not the same work because nothing beats an experienced nurse um and I've, I've heard in other in other sectors too you know um you know that you know they favor a 30 year old over you know over you know over 50 or 60 that's i mean but I, in here in America, yes, I know it's it's some it's a common phenomenon to 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 kind of bring. All right, so thanks for that. Two more questions, Matt. I see coming in. Andrew, your brother is asking. Mom, actually, mom is asking. When is the deadline to get the donations in? I, I think let's let's keep that for the last, so you can because okay. I want to close on that. As mm -hmm. and Debbie is asking whether it's expensive to clear shipment in Jamaica to donate. It sure is. Mm. It sure is. So I mean, I, the funds that I receive, along with my own personal funds, is used to um, is used to pay for the for the clearance of the goods. Yes, it's very expensive, but um, I hope to get more um, contributions or donations that will help offset that that cost. Okay, awesome. And Sophia says thank you for the answer. No. Thank you so much. At this point, we are, uh, we're, of course, wrapping up. And let me just say thank you so very much for watching. Uh, thank you so much, Natalie, for coming on. I'm giving you the <laughs> final words before I, you know, thank everybody else and everything. But I want you to finally just remind us about your, um, your backpack uh, project that you have mm -hmm. for, for students, for children in Jamaica here. Just tell us about it again, just, you know, wrap it up, what it is, when is, where they can find you to donate, and when is the deadline for the um, contributions? All right. Hi. So, Hanega, I want to thank you for having me today. It was last minute. I've never done anything like this before, but I'm, I'm honored, and I'm, I'm, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, um, basically, with Project Backpack, it's um, started three, four years ago. I'm, I'm collecting um, donations, monetary donations, along with actual supplies, book bags, um, and su tangible supplies in order to pack the book bags, um, to pack the book bags. So um, how you can contact me would be by social media. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. Um, you can direct message me with any questions, or if you'd like to donate, we can figure a way how to get the donation to me. Um, if you would like to donate by the internet, you can go on www.gofundme.com forward slash um, Project Backpack Jamaica 2017. Um, what else? So basically, um, 
the, oh, the deadline. The deadline is, I would say, I mean, I would accept donations up until the last minute. I mean, we're doing the, the giveaway in August, so, but I prefer the donation sooner than later so we can get the book bags bought, purchased and packed and sent down on time. Okay, thank you so much. That's mm -hmm. guys, you have been hearing from Natalie Hunter. She mm -hmm. has been doing great things, migrated from Jamaica to the US several years ago. She's a nurse that she says she loves to take care of the little people. <laughs> and it's been a pleasure having you on. Thank you so much, Natalie. Again, it was short notice that you decided to, that I reached out to you. Thank you, Stephen, for connecting us. And I want to say to everybody, thank you for watching. We are right here again in another two weeks. We'll bring you another Jamaican who's doing awesome stuff. And we just have a random conversation. It's not formal. It's a chit-chatting thing. We can get to know a little bit about them and what they've been up to. How are they contributing to society now? This is on the Jamaicans.com platform. And we want to also say thank you so much for Xavier, uh, Xavier Murphy for allowing us to do this on such a great platform. Continue to share that we're here. Continue to, to be a part of us. You can comment after, you know, the video is going to be posted. And we're also, um, Sophia, we're also going to be posting the GoFundMe. Um, Natalie, I'm going to ask you to post that information on the jamaicans.com page right on the comment after you post them just go right at it right there and post it of course i'm henica what is supporter you can find me henica what is supporter.com patwaapparel.com and i'm always on social media Instagram, <coughs> facebook twitter henica what is supporter or patwa apparel thank you so much and until next time god bless and walk good that's all thank you all right <laughs> Yay! Woo! You sure I lock off? <laughs> <laughs>